Webcam's working, cause you know, get to know. What's up guys, it's your boy Goblins, and today we're talking about something a little bit different. Today we're talking about Fallout. Yeah. As you guys know, Fallout drops, uh, like, tomorrow, I believe? Technically tomorrow at 10 o'clock, so that's happening. That's gonna happen. Now the purpose of this video is to kind of educate you guys a little bit more about Fallout, and, uh, to let you know that I'm gonna be uploading some Fallout content, probably for the next little while. Because it's Fallout. It's Fallout, bro. How could you not play Fallout? Oh my god, look at this brick kitty belly. Now you guys may or may not know, I love Fallout. And for that reason, I'm going to be uploading Fallout videos for the next little while because that's what I'll be playing. That's the purpose of me making Destiny videos because I like playing Destiny. So I upload Destiny videos. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're anything like me, you're probably super hype about Fallout 4, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Now before we get into this a little bit, I'd like to give a shout out to Excel on Im Imger, Imger, and Herp McDerp D Do on Imger. Yes, those are actual, those are their names. So Herp McDerpy Do on Imger summarized the events of Fallout in the most perfect description. It is that fossil fuels were nearly exhausted by 2050, and this led to a very intense geopolitical struggle between major superpowers, particularly China, Russia, and the United States. Thus, the major contributing factor to the Great War was the scarcity of oil, leading to the resource wars as nations fought for resources. This included China invading Alaska and U.S. annexing Canada. Ultimately, the situation came to a head as key members of the U.S. government, the Enclave, retreated to the safe zone on an oil rig and all nuclear armed nations let loose. In just under two hours, the modern world came to a halt. That happened October 23rd, 2077, which is what we get to see in Fallout 4 in this little this little scene here, which is super ballin' to experience. Well, one down. Now, if you guys don't remember from Fallout 3, there was a DLC called Anchorage in which you were playing in that Alaska US versus China war, which is pretty intense. You get some sweet gear from that Fallout DLC, it was great. So everything's going boom and people are being blown up and everyone's losing their mind. The modern world is lost in two hours. Oh my God, we're all dead. But thankfully the government of the United States was so smart to commission vaults. Now these vaults held people and housed them from the, the nuclear war that was bound to happen. The nuclear war in which happened because resources were running low, because Fallout takes place in a universe, in a separate universe, in which they didn't really indulge in and in research micro technologies. They just kept on using fossil fuels and it, it got worse and worse. And, you know, they never bothered with any of the other shit. They were just like, yo, oil, you feel me, right? So anyways, there was 122 known vaults and 17 were made as experiment controls. The people that were performing these experiments, of course, were the government. Things such as releasing chemicals and things that we call FEV, which stands for, uh, a uh, fucking, what's, uh, what is, what is, forced evolutionary virus in which the government created before the war, essentially. That's where mutants and super mutants and all that stuff come from. It's to serve the master. Which we'll get into in a minute, just hold, just hold, calm your tits. So, vaults were made to save people, but government, aka the Enclave, as known today in the Fallout universe, was performing experiments on these people. People didn't know that, they were just trying to, they were trying to live, survive, of course, you know? And there was a bunch of old military people for the US or whatever that were like, hey, wait a minute, this, this, this is weird. The government's doing weird things and experimenting on people. And so hence they stopped the people committing those experiments, locked up where these experiments were being held, and later on became the Brotherhood of Steel. So it's always kind of been the Brotherhood of Steel versus Enclave. The Brotherhood of Steel then went onwards to protect all pre-war technology, and they went ahead and tried to get the best gear out of everything and just essentially protect that old school before the war gear so that raiders don't get to it or any of that stuff. So it's, it's, it is, in a sense, to protect the wasteland, but at the same time to hoard all the pre-war stuff to themselves and and only become powerhouses in themselves, you know? The Brotherhood of Steel is seen as good and evil in the wasteland, because they protect people, but at the same time will go to lengths of killing people for old school technology. But for the most part, they are fighting the Enclave, which is the government, which was their general purpose from the beginning, and essentially combating all these crazy, like, forced evolutionary viruses and all that stuff that the government was trying to get at. Both factions are clad in power armor, as you guys know from the series, and that's, you know, that is is what it is. Now apparently sometime down the road some dude happened to unlock that place in which the Brotherhood of Steel thought they locked away from the Enclave for pr 
for, for doing those experiments. Someone got in there and got dropped into some old goop, which was actually the forced evolutionary virus. And then he became what he liked to call the master. He was the self-proclaimed proclaimed master. And he wanted to go across the wasteland and create these nasty old experiments and unite the wasteland, essentially mutate everything so that we could all live freely as mutants. But that didn't go accordingly. Deathclaws became a thing, mutants became a thing, super mutant, mutant behemoths became a thing, those guys with the big ass fire hydrants. Unfortunately, Deathclaws were the only cool thing that came from it because they could reproduce, which also caused a headache in the fucking wasteland. And also caused a headache for me, like, all the time in the goddamn Fallout games. Fucking death clock! And that's why you hear mutants, for example, refer to shit like, you know, for the master and all that stuff. It's the same idea as, like, for the horde, I'm assuming. Same, it's kind of the same concept. Now you guys are probably running, but goblins, what about the Legion and the NCR? New Vegas is based all around them. Well, New Vegas was awesome and probably actually my preferred favorite of the of, of Fallout 3 in New Vegas because it based itself more on the lore of Fallout 1 and 2, which a lot of people don't really accept and consider when we look at the construct of the games themselves. Anyways, not important. The first post-war human settlement built from scratch was the Shady Sands and was founded in... 2142 by inhabitants of Vault 15, a small quaint village built by the use of a GECK. Now the Shady Sands eventually became known as the New California Republic, making it the largest post-war settlement built completely from scratch. And that is essentially how the NCR came to be. And then they went along and liberated the land and wanted to be cool rangers and they got guns, you know? Yeah. Now the Legion were, were a whole bunch of different groups. They're, the Legion essentially was a bunch of tribes that essentially snowballed and created this fat ass Legion. Yeah, fat ass. What happens is one tribe pretty much engulfed another tribe by killing them and all that stuff. So they kept snowballing into tribes and essentially pretty much became the Roman Empire. They're essentially a bunch of assholes who think that they're, it's the Roman Empire. It's essentially Rome. They're, they're based off like, some crazy imperialist type of ideal. I mean, I guess the, the concept of them is really cool. They're just dicks. They're just dicks, you know? But they're cool. They got cool wolf hoods and stuff. You know, they got... I mean, you can't say you don't got a cool wolf hood. And I mean... <laughs> yeah. So the Legion's trying to essentially, like, in a sense, corrupt the land, and NCR's trying to save it, and they go along and pretty much just fuck up everything in their, in their, their way, and, like, brutally mass murder people and like brutally engulf people into their society and all that stuff. And NCR doesn't want that. NCR wants like the old ways, you know? Now, I will say the Legion has been gone about and call a bunch of savages and all that stuff as well. But at the same time too, when you consider it, they're just a different way of thinking, a different way of living. Which is why a lot of people actually went and, you know, sided along the Legion on their first playthrough of New Vegas. Was because it wasn't that it was the most ideal society. It was just a different society. It's like why people join terrorist organizations because they're just want to change it for something. I don't know. I don't really know, you know? You know, we're talking about fucking a video game, right? Oh yeah, and don't forget, there's ghouls. Now there's feral ghouls, which, you know, unfortunately are, you know, they attack you and kill you straight up. Then there's non-feral ghouls. These, these ghouls are nice, they're non-feral. They have their cognitive understanding and thinking and all that stuff. These guys are cool. Now, unfortunately, modern day Fallout and surviving the wasteland and all that stuff doesn't allow for people to discern non-feral and feral. It just got, it, nobody got time for that. So people often kill the non-feral ghouls. These non-feral ghouls come from a vault that was actually exposed to radiation with the vault door left open as the bombs hit and henceforth became non-feral ghouls. They're still kind of there, but they just look different now, affected by radiation and all. But people hate them. People don't be anything about that life. So because they got denied so, so much, you know, ability to hide within a different area, they decided to go and create their own city, which is called Necropolis. Usually they live in their own tight-knit tribes and cults, uh, separate from the modern world because people hate them, so. But they're generally good people for what, for what it is. Some people would, so, some people say otherwise, I don't know. That's it though. <clears throat> now talking Fallout 4, we know that it takes place in Boston. We know that it might have to do with Massachusetts and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We know that right now, we all, all we've got is like the trailers and gameplay that we have to go off of and Dr. Zimmer from Fallout 3, which he says, the Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however, 
And, I mean, in Fallout 4, you will emerge into the war-ravaged Commonwealth, and all we know about this area is what comes from Dr. Zimmer in Fallout 3. That's all we know. We don't, we don't know much else other than that. That's it. And, of course, the gameplay we've seen. And, of course, that big old boom that you see. That's baller. But otherwise, that's about it. Now, unfortunately, that's all I got to talk about today, guys. I just want to let you guys know I'm super hyped for Fallout 4. I'm stoked to upload some videos. Let's talk just to Fallout 4. Yay! And I'll be uploading some videos on Fallout 4. Of course, when it comes out tomorrow at 10 o'clock Mountain Time for me. That's me. That's me. I don't know about you guys, but that's just me. So as I always say, drop a like for your boy, Goblins, if you enjoyed the video. And I'll be back here with more Fallout content or Destiny content, either or, within the next little while. So as I always say, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have an enjoyable Fallout 4 launch, and I will not see you in the Fallout 4 world. But I'll see you enjoying it, and we'll talk about it later. Take it easy, guys. Have a general good, and I'll see you then. Peace out!